friends. Welcome back to Incredibly Useful Exercises for the Double Bass, where we condition specific aspects of our performance in short stolen moments. I'm Dennis Whitaker. Today, we're going to create an exercise to condition a common bass excerpt from the tone poem Ein Heldenleben by Richard Strauss. I see a lot of students struggle with the opening slurred arpeggios, so I thought I would offer up an incredibly useful bow management strategy that'll give bass students a fighting chance. I want to thank Joey Nager for his generous support of this series. Joey has been my go-to luthier for over five years. He sculpted my fingerboards buzz-free on both my 1850 English orchestra bass and my solo bass, making them so easy to play, and his tone work on my basses keeps them sounding full, free, and beautiful. Many professional working bassists throughout Texas rely on Joey for fixing and maintaining their treasured instruments. The Joey Nager prize-winning basses are also wonderful instruments. Please visit Joey's website listed below, and if you happen to be in the Houston area, pay him a visit to play his basses and to see how he can improve the playability and tone of your instrument. The opening slurred arpeggios in Heldenleben No. 9 is unique in our literature. There's no other excerpt like this outside of Strauss, so it's no wonder that basses struggle with it. It demonstrates a lot about a player, the ability to cross strings smoothly, a full tone, lyricism, their ability to cover the lower octave of the fingerboard in a single bound, and many others. Without an understanding of the bow management issues in play, the player is left with a Hail Mary approach to whether or not it'll come out. I give this excerpt the following ratings about. Time is two, power is four, control is four, velocity is one, mindfulness is four, coordination is five, expression, sorry, coordination is three, expression is five, and endurance is one. Notice that power is lower than expression. That's because I don't approach this, this excerpt as if it's mainly about power. In the end, it really depends on the conductor, but every conductor I've played this with has demanded more out of the lyricism of the line than pure volume. My philosophy is beauty before power, meaning that if you spend most of your time making this excerpt beautiful, then power will creep into it naturally. I practice this exercise for the mastery of optimal bow division in the Heldenleben arpeggios. You may have different fingerings, which will present minor bow division differences, but nothing too drastic. Use whichever fingering you can execute the best. Here's the opening arpeggio at number nine, along with my sloppy personal copy that I've had with me for over 20 years of study. Each statement has seven notes. One note on the down bow, five on the up bow, and one more on a down bow. To simplify it, let's remove the down bows. The only thing about those is that they must start at the frog and go all the way to the tip. That leaves us with five notes in an up bow. Our strategy here is to play the last note in that slur starting at the middle of the bow and in the correct string plate placement. Let's tonalize the high G up bow from the middle to the frog and find an ideal sounding point. I'll play it three times. Three, two, one. So I'll aim for right about here. Now let's add the next note and see how it sounds. Two, one. That leaves four notes to be played in the upper half. Let's divide this into four equal parts and assign one note for each part. First, I'll practice with a stopped slur to divide the bow. This is an incredibly useful technique that I use all the time when I'm working on bow management in my lyrical solos. Bodicineology, meditation from Tice, my concertos, all those fun things. By the way, for you teachers, this practice technique is introduced in Suzuki Book 2 as students begin to work on their slurs. Suzuki's plan was to introduce this practice technique to students in Book 2 so that their slurs would be beautiful and controlled by the time they got to book nine. That is good planning. I usually tend to use more bow than I want. I need to keep the bow speed slow, so I'll lower the bow to the part of the string that's vibrating slowly, whatever it takes not to go past the middle of the bow. 
If I have less than half of my bow for the top note, it's going to sound choked. Now, this is what I recommend here. If you're new at this excerpt, I highly recommend that you practice right at this level, 10 minutes a day, every day for about the next two weeks. I know you're anxious to play this because it's fun, but if you're learning this excerpt, chances are high that you're learning it for college or pro auditions. This means that you're going to be playing this for years. So giving yourself two weeks of playing it slowly, but with perfect bow division, is a great investment. As your right arm frees up over the years, you'll find yourself having good expressive control over your slurs. So let's say I've practiced for two weeks with my stopped slurs, and I'm ready to put the slurs together. I know the first note has to go to the tip. I know the next four notes can't go past the middle. The sixth note goes all the way to the frog. And then note number seven starts right at the frog and goes all the way to the tip. So let's play it in these four segments with precise bow divisions. Finally, put it all together. I have three specific checkpoints in my mind and muscle memory. Tip, middle, frog. My goal is to hit each checkpoint as I play. Three. And that's my bowing strategy. There are four of these licks at number nine. Let's apply this strategy to each one. I'll leave out the down bows for the first step, and I'll play each one step, I'll play each step just once for now. I suggest three times in your own practice. Now with slurs in four segments. And then finally, all four as written. Remember to keep it beautiful. The power will come. Don't add power if it's not beautiful. It'll set you back further than it's worth. Have fun and be patient. With the right bow division, you'll have a great chance of handling it. Thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you find these bow division exercises as useful for Heldenleben as they have been for mine. I present these exercises in the way that I've used and benefited from them. I never intend to say that my ways are the only way to practice this or to approach this concept. Feel free to adapt any of these ideas to your style of curiosity, conditioning, or teaching. Practice these and all other exercises in this series in short stolen moments or incorporate them into your regular conditioning routine. Like and subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this and leave any questions, comments, observations, success stories, or suggestions down below. Please check out the incredibly useful exercises series of workout books available on, in paperback and ebook on Amazon.com. I look forward to you joining me next time. Thank you, and be well, friends.